Junior Dos Santos is such a likable guy, but he instantly changes to a destroyer once he enters the cage. The Brazilian fighter rose up in the UFC heavyweight rankings due to his high level boxing which saw him put away his opponents with ease. This led to him capturing UFC gold, and it also got him in some of the best fights in heavyweight history. Even after losing the belt, he was still seen as one of the best in the division for a while. But as I make this video, he is 36 going on to 37 and is on a 4 fight losing streak. So how good was Junior Dos Santos actually? Hey guys, it's Keon and today we're going to be talking about Junior Sagano Dos Santos. He is one of my favorite fighters of all time. It's almost impossible not to root for him. And that's not only due to his knockout power, but also his charismatic personality. He was an absolute killer back in the day. But now, it's clear to many that he is past his prime. So in this video, we will take a look at Junior's career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Now let's get to it. Junior began his MMA career on July 16th, 2006 at the age of 22. His first opponent was Jailson Silva Santos. And after clinching up and securing a takedown, Junior secured another and followed that up with a soccer kick and a punch that knocked Jailson out. After this win, he fought Eduardo Mayorino. It took Junior 50 seconds to connect with a flurry of punches, secure a takedown, and finish the fight on top with a guillotine. Four and a half months later, he fought Edson Ramos. This was Junior's debut at light heavyweight. Edson spent most of this fight looking for the takedown, but that was easily denied by Junior who picked him apart on the feet. This included a big right hand and a knee that dropped Edson. Junior followed up with ground and pound. When the two got back up, Edson's takedown attempt caused an accidental head clash. The doctor stopped the fight and Junior was awarded with the TKO win. His next fight was against Joaquin Fajera. Junior opened up the fight by landing some hard shots. This forced Joaquin to shoot for a takedown which he secured. But once Junior got back up, he continued to be the aggressor on the feet. Joaquin tried to bring the fight down again but now his attempts were being denied. And after a big shot in the clinch from Junior, he went down and wanted no more. But the two fought again after Junior picked up another win. And although he reversed Joaquin following a takedown, Junior got caught in an armbar that forced him to tap, handing him his first pro loss. Six and a half months later, Junior returned to heavyweight and fought Geronimo de Santos. The two opened up the fight by swinging toe to toe, but then Junior secured a takedown. Throughout all this, Geronimo got cut above the eye. And after Junior threw more elbows to that spot, the doctor stopped the fight. On October 25th, 2008, Junior signed with the UFC. His first fight with the promotion was against Fabricio Verdum. Although Junior was the underdog going into this fight, he finished Verdum in the first round with a big uppercut and more punches. At UFC 95, he fought Stefan Struve, and it took Junior 54 seconds to connect with a barrage of punches that forced the ref to step in. After this win, he fought former Pride Openweight Grand Prix champion, Mirko Krokop. Although Junior looked close to finishing the fight early in the first, Mirko survived but continued taking punishment on the feet. He would go on to verbally submit in the third round after his eyes shut from a knee and an uppercut. At UFC 108, Junior fought former rings openweight champion, Gilbert Ivel. Junior was back to his first round finishing ways by connecting with a huge left hand and ground and pound. Two and a half months later, he fought Gabriel Gonzaga. Although Junior got taken down early, he immediately got back up and landed a left hand that put Gonzaga down. Junior threw ground and pound before the ref stepped in. At UFC 117, he fought Ultimate Fighter Season 10 winner, Roy Nelson. Although Junior connected with some hard punches that looked close to ending the fight, Roy was able to eat them for three rounds and land some shots of his own. But in the end, Junior won by unanimous decision. Following this win streak, he became a coach on the 13th season of The Ultimate Fighter opposite former UFC heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar. This season really showcased Junior's friendly and joyous personality, which was a huge reason I became a fan of his. He was supposed to fight Brock at the end of the season, but Brock pulled out and was replaced by Shane Carwin. The fight was to determine the number one contender, and I remember it being promoted as one that would end quick due to both fighters being heavy hitters. But instead, it went all three rounds and for the most part, Junior was landing more on the feet, and in the end, he won by unanimous decision. Five months later, Junior fought for the UFC Heavyweight Championship against champion Cain Velasquez. The fight marked the UFC's debut on Fox. And although they planned an hour of airtime for the main event, all Junior needed was 64 seconds to connect with a huge right hand and punches on the ground to finish the fight, making him the new UFC Heavyweight Champion. And it was later revealed that Junior had torn his meniscus going into this fight. He was supposed to defend his belt against former Strike Force Heavyweight Champion Alistair Overeem, but Alistair was pulled from the fight due to a failed drug test, and he was replaced by by former UFC heavyweight champion, Frank Mir. The fight was entirely on the feet where Junior was the aggressor. After a couple of knockdowns in round two, Frank was finished on the ground by a hammer fist. At UFC 155, Junior fought Cain Velasquez for a second time. In contrast to their first matchup, Cain's pressure both on the feet and on the ground was too much. Junior's best shot at winning was a one-punch knockout, but he was unable to find it and after five rounds, Cain won by unanimous decision. Junior's first fight after losing the belt was against Mark Hunt, and in my opinion, it was one of his best performances as 
because he outclassed Mark on the feet for most of the fight. Despite Mark's ability to take hits, he ended up getting knocked out in the third with a spinning back kick and punches. This led to another shot at the title for Junior. So at UFC 166, he fought champion Cain Velasquez for a third time. And much like the second fight, Cain controlled the action with his constant pressure on the feet and on the ground. Although Junior had his moments on the feet, Cain's pace was too difficult for him to keep up with. Junior attempted to lock in a choke in the final round, but Cain used that to slam him to the mat head first and finish him with punches. 14 months later, Junior fought Stipe Miocic. Stipe started off strong with constant pressure on the feet and takedown attempts. Yet all but one of his attempts were denied, and going into the third he was slowing down, which gave Junior the opportunity to connect on the feet and gain some momentum. Both men showed lots of heart, but Junior's experience really helped him in the later rounds, and after a back and forth battle, he won by unanimous decision. After another year long layoff, Junior came back and finally fought Alistair Overeem. Junior had his moments on the feet, but so did Alistair, and in the second round he landed a big left hand that dropped Junior. Alistair followed up with ground and pound before referee Dan Mergliata stepped in. Junior came back four months later to fight Ben Rothwell. Ben was pressing forward for most of the fight, but Junior was able to avoid most of his attacks and outstrike him. After five rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 211, Junior fought for the UFC Heavyweight Championship against champion Stipe Miocic, making it their second meeting. But in contrast to their first matchup, Junior was unable to handle the constant pressure. He was able to land some nice leg kicks, but overall Stipe outstruck him before landing a right hand and ground and pound that forced referee Herb Dean to step in. On August 18th, 2017, Junior was suspended by USADA for failing a drug test, but eight months later, he was cleared of intentionally using PEDs due to a tainted supplement from Brazil. So Junior came back on July 14th, 2018 to fight former PFL heavyweight champion, Blagoy Ivanov. The two were trading on the feet for the entire fight and although Blagoy had his moments, Junior landed the more significant shots and was the fresher fighter by the end. After five rounds, he won by unanimous decision. Four and a half months later, he fought Tai Tiovasa. Tai came out strong with his pressure and heavy punches, but Junior ate these shots and returned some as well. And in the second, he dropped Tiovasa with a right hand. Eventually, Junior mounted him and rained down the punches before Herb Dean stepped in. After this win, he fought Derek Lewis. This was a wild fight that saw both men trading on the feet and getting rocked. But after the back and forth action, Junior connected with a barrage of punches before finishing Derek with ground and pound. Three months later, he fought Francis Ngannou. Junior connected with some nice leg kicks, but a powerful barrage of punches by Francis dropped him and forced Herb Dean to step in. Following this defeat, Junior fought Curtis Blades. The two traded on the feet for the entire fight, which was a surprise as Curtis is a high level wrestler, but he was able to hang with Junior on the feet, and he eventually finished him in the second with a big right hand, knees, and more punches. At UFC 252, Junior fought Jairzinho Rosenstrike. Junior lost the fight in the second by a right hand that dropped him before eating more punches on the ground. Four months later, he fought Cyril Gunn. Junior got outstruck for the entire fight before getting rocked by a right hand. Cyril proceeded to finish him with an elbow to the head and ground and pound. There was controversy surrounding the elbow as Junior said it was to the back of the head. And while I do think he has a case if he really tries to push for it, it doesn't change the fact that he was getting outclassed before the knockdown. Plus, with him being 36 years old on a four fight losing streak and UFC president Dana White saying that he should retire, it's safe to say that Junior's best years are long behind him. So after going 21 and 9 in a career that saw him become the UFC heavyweight champion, how good was Junior Dos Santos actually? He is one of the best strikers in heavyweight history. His boxing was crisp as he had fast hands that carried a lot of power. He has one of the best overhand rights that I've ever seen. Although he was known more as a puncher, he also threw some impressive kicks and knees. There were very few who were able to eat the shots and stay standing. But more importantly, he was very tactical with his attacks. He holds wins over Cain Velasquez and Stipe Miocic, who were two of the greatest heavyweights in MMA history. And in those matchups, he truly displayed the heart of a champion. He was able to dig deep when the pressure was on, which is why his four fight losing streak is really telling of how far he is from his prime now. His inability to take shots like he used to has stripped the confidence from his striking. He now worries more about getting clipped instead of pressing forward with attacks. But after so many years of taking hits from the best heavyweights in MMA, his ability to take damage was bound to end at some point. And for someone who was a huge Junior Dos Santos fan back in the day, it's hard to see when one of your heroes fall. But I try to remember the good days on when he went on one of the most epic runs in UFC heavyweight history. Back when he was someone who could go from happy and kind to absolutely terrifying with one face off. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10. His personality is very infectious and was a huge reason I became a fan of his. I can compare it to UFC fighter and fellow Brazilian, Amanda Hibas. Two people who are very easy to root for due to their positive outlook and authenticity. And the more they win, the happier you get for them. There is a quote Junior once said in a video, and it may not be word for word, but it is something that I've remembered and have been trying to live by ever since. He said, when you're a good person and you work hard, things happen. And Junior Dos Santos made things happen by doing just that. My name is Keon and this is my take on Junior Sigano Dos Santos. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? 
please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you on my next one.